Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on Accenture's coding round. So this is the part three of the video and we have previously solved some of the questions on the part one and part two that you can go and check on the channel. So in this one, we are going to solve one more question for which has been asked in the last year of Accenture's coding round. All right. And now, uh, as you know, there are more than 30 plus companies are going to hire this placement season. So we are going to come up with a lot of uh, these kind of uh, videos on the channel so that make sure you subscribe here and hit the bell icon to get notified once we upload the video and also we are going to share a lot of hiring related information on our other social media channels like uh, instagram whatsapp discord linkedin and telegram so all the links for this channels are given on the description so make sure you check these channels and you subscribe and follow the respective so that you'll stay ahead of everyone in terms of getting the updates regarding your placements all right. So now, as always, the top three commenters are going to get Previnsta Prime subscription for absolutely free. So make sure you do some engagements on the comment section. Let us know how these videos are going on, how this are helpful for you so that we can come up with more such videos for you. All right. So before coming up with the question, I will I will explain you about how the coding round is going to be. So basically, you will get 45 minutes to solve two questions and you will, you can choose a favorite programming language of yours. So either you can select uh, C, C++, uh, Java or Python. So these are just a few that I'm listing. So you can uh, pick any one you are comfortable with. And in order to crack this uh, coding round, you have to submit one complete output, which is correct. And one partial output is uh, required. So if you fulfill this, so then only you can uh, clear the round. All right. So for that, so what we made is like we have also a dedicated page for Accenture's coding uh, questions on prepinstar.com. The link will be also added in the description. So make sure uh, for more practice, you, you go and check the previous year question papers. We have submitted all the code on, on all the programming languages. So wherever, whichever language you're going to choose on the exam day. So you will get the solution for the previous year question paper on that page. All right. So now uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump into the question. Here. So this is a question that we have. So the binary number system, as you know, it utilizes two z digits, one, zero and one. So binary number systems are represented by only these two numbers. And this number system can be referred to as a binary string. Okay. So now we, are, we have to implement a function and what exactly we want from the function. Let's see. So this is a function that is given to you. So uh, def operations binary string where you are taking the parameter as a string. So in this, it's going to be a binary string and the function takes the string as its argument. The string consists of the binary digits separated by an alphabet as follows. So whatever the input that we are going to get as a string is going to consist of some of the binary numbers separated by some of the alphabets. And what's the meaning of this alphabets? What exactly we are going to do is, so if the alphabet is A, then it denotes that you have to perform the AND operation. For example, let's say we have this as 0 uh, and A and 1. So this is a string. For example, this is we have. So you have to perform this A represents that you have to perform 0 and 1. So you, we have to perform the AND operation on this 0 and 1. And what is mean by B? So that it denotes or operation. So similarly, like let's say 1 uh b1 so if you perform so that means one or one and if as you know if uh, any value that you have in the or operator so it's going to return as if any value is true it will return as true so this is what we have and similarly uh, the character c denotes xor operation so these are the operators so we are going to have a string something like so some one zero a one a 0, B, something like that. And we have to fix or we have to uh, identify what are these characters. And depending on the meaning of the characters given like here and operation or operation or X or operation and that we have to perform on these two numbers. And let's say whatever the result that you get out of this first operation. So let's say here we have result and on that result, we have to perform this operation. So let's say uh, you have picked uh, initially this, we got some result. Then you will get the result and this uh, with this number and we are going to perform this operation. All right. So that's what it is accepted. 
and let's see if we have any kind of a conditions that we need to follow or, or anything that we need to know more about the question all right so you are required to calculate the result of a string by scanning the string from left to right and performing the one operation at a time so each time we have to perform one operation and then returning the result and what is the note that we have so no order of operation or priorities is required so basically in python that we know if you have a mathematical operator or if you have this uh, kind of a binary or boolean operators so basically uh, what we have is like uh, order of precedence or you can say in the mathematics or basically like board master right so that is not required here so you can directly pick, uh, pick a string from start to end and you can perform all the operations sequentially however they have mentioned now the length of the string is going to be odd so you, you, we have the assumption that uh, always whenever the string is going to be given the input it's going to be odd because normally let's say if we perform the addition and if you just say 1 plus 2 it's going to be the length is going to be odd right so similarly uh, if it's 0 a 1 it's going to be odd and even if you add more characters here so eventually it's going to be odd always and if str that is our string is null or none in case of python we are going to return minus one so basically uh, each programming language have different name for the null value or the empty value or the non-existing value right so in python we call it as none other programming languages you can either call null nil or there are a lot of names that you have or undefined something like that all right so now uh, this is what we have and we have to solve the question let's look at uh, some of the examples so this is the example that we have uh, this is the input given and after performing all the operation although we are going to perform all of this on the binary operation so eventually you're going to get the output either zero or one right so now uh, what we have to do is let's say uh, from this entire string first we'll perform one c zero which is nothing but one x or and zero so binary value that we have so i'll write it as this and what are the result that you get here let's say for example, I'm not solving this. So for example, I'm just considering, let's say the output is one. On that, we will perform one more C and the next value that we have is a one. So sequentially like this, you're going to pick this, then after with answer this, then after answer this and after this, and at the end, what the output that we get, which is what we have as a one and that we are going to return. Similarly, we're going to do this for this as well. And we're going to get the zero as the output. So basically what we will do is, Let's look at the code and let's feed this input and let's see how this works. So now, uh, since this question is asked in the coding round, so you do not have to worry about how exactly and or an XOR works. So if it, if you know that it is good right, so that you can verify if your answer is correct or not. But let's say this same question, if it is worth asked in the pseudo code round and you are given so that you can apply uh, some of the tricks here. All right. So basically, uh, as you know, like B represents, all right. So, so B represents what or operator, right? And if you are reading string from this to this, and as you know, whenever you are applying the or operator, or operator will result one if any of the value is one, or any of the value if it is true, one represents true. So any of the value is true. Eventually, the second operator, whatever it will be. So second value, whatever it will be, despite of if it is zero or one, it's eventually return one only because in uh, we have for the or operator true or false will return true. Basically any value, if it is one of the value is true, then it will return true. So for this, uh, this is for uh, if you have asked the same kind of question in the pseudo code. So you can check this, the last value. So no matter what, whatever the result that you're going to get, it's either going to be zero or one. So if you're going to perform the OR operation on one, it's going to eventually be a one. So that's the shortcut that you can apply. And similarly, this is going to apply. And, and so here you're going to find it say this zero represent false. And as you know, with the AND operator, if any of the value is false, it will be false. The answer is going to be false. So to perform, to get the uh, true as an output from the AND operator, so both the values need to be true. Then only you will get the value true. Otherwise it will be always false. So this is a shortcut will only help you when uh, you get this kind of a question on a pseudo code. So we have uh, one more video for the same Accenture pseudo code round where I've told you some of the tricks like this. So make sure you check the channel and there also you will watch the complete video of the pseudo code. But since this is the 
uh, coding lounge. So you are expected to uh, opt uh, like compute all these values. So there you need to you need not know to how actually the operation works since we are going to use the operators only, right? So now uh, let's go back to the Visual Studio Code, and here we have so we have the function. So first thing that we have to take care of if the any input that is given if it is none, all right. Uh, let me check color. All right. So if the input is that we have none, so it will return minus one. If it is not none, then we will type. So let's see uh, what the string that we have here. So let's I'll just uh, write this one c zero one c. All right. So I'll just take this part. One c zero one. See, let's say one zero. So this is what the string that we have. So first thing, so this is the string. For example, let's say this is our uh, input value that we have. So what we are going to store in the result is the string of zero. So what is the value of the string of zero? Since as you know, string, we have uh, the index value at zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? So the first, the zero value that we're going to store in the result and uh, we are going to iterate on this length of the string. So we are, we are going to use the for loop and the range function to iterate on all this. So we are going to read all the characters one by one from the string. And as you know, the range function consists of the first value as a start, then second value as end, and the third value or the third parameter that we have passed is a step parameter. So basically we are going to start reading the string from the index one. So because this is the index one that we have, all right. And from this index one, we will store this value of index or this value, the C as an operator. The I value that is going to be here uh, for the first iteration, it's going to be one. And the end is going to be the total length of the string. And now what is going to be our operand on which value? So basically operator is like our operator and this is going to be the value, right? So the string of I plus one. So initially this value, this zero, we have already stored it as a result. And this one, this zero, the this sorry, this one at the index zero, we have already stored as a result. This value, the second value, that we are going to storing as str plus i plus one as an operator. So we got this index zero and index two values. One is into a result, another one as an operand. And this operator we have in the this i value initially at one. All right. So after that, we are going to use a simple if else statement to identify if the uh, value at picked index, if it is either going to be a, b or c. And depends on what is the character that we have found, we are going to perform that kind of operation on this one, right? So first let's check. So what, what is going to be? So here in this scenario, we have this as a C. So this will be false. This will be false. And this is the true for, for our first condition, because since we have identified this operator of string of I as C here, it will match us here. So the operator at C, this condition is true. And what we are going to perform, we are going to update the result variable. So this result variable, result XOR with the operand. And what is the operand? So initially result we have zero and X and the operator that we have XOR. And what is the operand that we have? This, sorry, uh, initially we have, all right, so basically my fault. So here initially we have the result result as one, all right? And the operator is X or, and uh, this operand we have zero. So we are going to perform this operation and we are going to store the value in the result. So this is for the first iteration. For the second iteration, we are going to update this value. So now it is going to take the two steps, right? Since uh, the step parameter is given to, so this will jump to uh, where we have. So you have right. So basically zero one, and it is supposed to be a character here and not the number. So my bad of taking the example, and we can see all right one c zero a and zero, and we have your we need to have. Uh, 
All right. So we are going to have one C zero, and then whatever the output that we are going to perform A with the new value, and then we are going to perform. Or uh, let's see this as C, and then we can say one here. This will be index six, and now the length will become since it is starting from zero. This will become all right. So because of that, the, that's the uh, mistake from my end. So now, so once we update that, so it will going to jump here on the index three where we have new our uh, upper. Uh, we have a new operator a, and whatever the result from this one we got, we are going to perform the and operation on this value. So likewise, this is going to iterate on all the values, and then we are going to store the result here. All right, and for the for this to solve, we are going to pass the input, and this one we are going to uh, store the input, and that string we are going to pass here on this uh, function we are going to call, and this will eventually print the result which we are going to get as an input. All right. So what we will do is here I will take the example of this. So what is we have is like so let's uh, run this. All right. So all right. So all right, let's run. So here we have uh, what I'll do is so here we have to pass uh, the input of the string which we have like one c zero. Let's not to just avoid. Uh, we're going to pass the value as this C one, and what we have one more C one A zero, then B one. So this is the input string that we have, and if I enter here, so we are going to get the output as one. So this is going to pick all the values. Initially, like you can execute one more time. And you can pass this string so that we have. You can check on this string. You will get the value output as zero as always. All right. So basically, this is the output of the code that we got is from the Python code. So you can write. So once you understand the logic, basically what we are going to do is just because of some uh, false example that was messed up. But you can just pick the correct example, and so that we are just going to iterate over. We are going to pick some operator and operand, and we are going to perform if else condition. And wherever the condition matches, we are going to pick that operator, and we are going to perform that operation. And eventually, at the end, we are going to get the result. So this is the basic uh, that logic that we have. You can implement the same with C plus plus or Java or C as well. And let us know the output or the result that you got. Uh, the code that you have written for the same Python code in C plus plus or Java. Make sure you comment that so that we can pick. Uh, the top three commenters from this video, so that you will get a chance to win Prevent Subprime subscription for free of cost. And as always, so just the last minute, I want to tell you that there are more than uh, thirty plus companies are going to hire soon. So make sure you hit uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and you follow us on all our social media channels. That's it for the video. I will see you in the next one.